Hey guys, I'm Chantelle and welcome back to Intentional Homeschooling. Now, today I actually wanted to jump on real quick and share a little bit about our human body unit that we've been working on recently. Um, we started it last week and it's something my kids have been wanting to do for a while and I finally decided to jump in. It's a little bit out of my element so it took me a little while to kind of gather the resources but I kind of wanted to show you how I organize a super simple unit study and why I love doing it this way. So I like to talk to my kids a lot about what interests them, what do they want to learn about next, and that kind of guides our homeschool. I could not decide in September what we're going to study in March. That just, it doesn't work for my brain and it also doesn't seem to work for my kids. So recently they both said they wanted to learn about the human body and we have a bunch of resources in our home that I pulled it together. I looked online for a few and then I also purchased I think just one thing for this unit. Everything else I already had. So what I like to do is try to not purchase too much. I like to have a lot of resources in my home we can pull from and then also the library which we use a lot although we didn't actually use it all for this unit because I don't know how long we're going to be doing a unit. I don't want to think we're going to be doing a week-long unit and then they get really into it and we end up stretching it out. I mean, that's okay. It's more like I don't want to think we're doing a month-long unit and they completely waver and their attention span is gone and we're still trying to push on. Um, to be honest, I thought they would be interested in this unit longer. I thought we would probably do this for a month and after the end of a week, like they enjoyed our week, but I think they are ready to move on. So before we get too far away from it, I want to share all the different resources. So I guess we'll just go in like no particular order. One of the things that we have not finished yet, um, we got this Dr. Livingston's Anatomy Jigsaw Puzzle uh, probably like a year ago and I knew I wanted to do a human body unit at some point and this was finally the point. So what this is, is it's a 538 piece puzzle. This one is just the head. It is oddly shaped because it is like shaped like the head. It doesn't have the rectangle shape most puzzles have. Um, and 500 piece puzzles don't seem that hard. But this one, because it's so oddly shaped and therefore the pieces are so oddly shaped, it's been really difficult. We haven't even finished this one yet. So we're going to be continuing this. But the cool thing is we have the head. We have the human thorax, which is another 500 pieces. And we have the human abdomen, which is 577 pieces. Altogether, these three end up being, I believe it was 1,615 pieces. And you can actually put them kind of together. So we have pieces one, two, and three. And they have also legs and arms, which we don't own. And altogether, it ends up being 10 feet tall when it's made. So approximately the part that we have is about five feet tall just for these three puzzles. So while we have kind of moved on from our human body unit, we are still working on the puzzles. The winter was a really good time to do this. Um, I would not really recommend these for younger than my kids. Mine are um, eight and 11. It, they've been a little bit difficult. Actually, honestly, my husband and I have put quite a bit of the puzzle together. Um, but these are really good and they're supposed to be 100% medically accurate. It's drawn by a certified medical in illustrator who studied at John Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. So yeah, it's really interesting. And like the detail, this one's gonna be a really interesting one to put together. One of the resources that we've owned for a number of years, this is probably one of the most poured over books in our home. That is the Osborne Seat Inside Your Body book. Uh, there's only a total of 15 pages in this book, um, but my kids have looked at this so much. So there's all these different flaps with different information. We've got um, covering, oh yes, this is, this is a favorite page. Eating and excreting because you follow the food down and then, you know, it ends in poop and kids just love that. Um, this book though, it's not something I have ever I don't think like sat down and read to the kids, but especially my son, he has looked over this so much. Even pre-reading, he knew so much about the body because of the pictures. And then now that he can read, he's learning even more. Um, so this has been one of the most read books in our house. 
and was really good to add in for this human body unit. Another one that I owned that is not necessarily human body specific, uh, but I pulled in is How Great Is Our God? These are 100 Indescribable Devotions About God and Science by Louis Giglio. Uh, this is kind of part of a series. I think this is maybe book three or something in the series. They're generally really short devotionals um, that incorporate some kind of science. But for this particular book, and I'm not sure about the other ones because I haven't looked at them, um, they tell you kind of what the topic is. So this one has something to do with animals because there's a footprint there. This one has something to do with earth because there's um, an earth over here. And so what I was doing during the week of our human body unit was I was looking for all the ones that had the handprint because those have to do with the human body. So we went through and read um, over the course of the week, like five of these or whatever, and learned a lot about the human body, but also other things as well, because this one is about sweating. So we learn about sweating and how God made us. But then we also learned that hippos, when they sweat, it their sweat is pink. So yeah, we went and did a bunch of these. And so that was kind of like a cool addition, um, just a way to show how creative God made us. Then I also, I got this book from Book Outlet, I think about a year ago, Stuff You Need to Know About the Human Body, What Happens to All the Food You Eat, What Are hor Hormones, How Do We, How Do Bones Mend? Now, because my son is so into the human body, this is one that I just wanted to grab for him and it, I pulled it out during our unit and he spent even more time looking it over. So it is, how does your heart beat? And then like, where does blood go? And it opens up. This is actually a really cool book. So there's a number of different fold out pages. This one is what are bones, talks about breaks, and then what's holding you together. And a little skeleton. One of the things, because I used to teach grade seven um, phys ed, we often talked about the human body as part of our unit as well. And one of the resources I used back then that I owned for a while, but no longer own, uh, was a skeleton, but I just got one like at Halloween. Um, he was about, I don't know, two and a half, three feet tall maybe. And I used that to talk about the different bones and my daughter was obsessed with that for years. I kind of wish I would have kept it because that would have been a really cool addition into this unit as well. Um, maybe something I look at next Halloween when things are out again. Something I bought that kind of started this entire unit, finally pushed me over the edge, was when we were Christmas shopping. I saw this squishy human body thing and I was like, okay, we, we're gonna buy that and after Christmas, we're gonna do a human body unit. And I mean, this looks cool, but I didn't realize how much time we were gonna spend with this. The first day that we got it, we went through all the different organs in here and it was almost two hours that we were dissecting this guy. Oh, his um insides are not doing so well. Um, but we named our little guy Bertram. Hello, say hi to Bertram. And he, okay, putting his insides back is the hardest part. Um, he has what, I think it says nine, 21 removable parts. That's what it is, 21 removable parts. So, oh dear, his poor little intestines, they don't like to stay in. Um, normally he's lying flat, so he's okay. But then it comes with this book and it goes through if you're eating pizza, it goes through where it goes in your body, it goes through your stomach, and then as you're reading about the stomach, you remove that portion out of your Bertram. And it tells you like where the food goes, then it talks about intestines, and then you take those out, your liver, and then also kidneys and bladder, diaphragm, heart, esophagus and trachea, lungs, skin and muscles. So for this guy, his skin and mus or his skin is the plastic coating, but then it does have one arm muscle and one leg muscle. And then it goes on to bones, which where he doesn't have muscle, he has bones. So this took us like two hours, almost two hours 
to pull everything out, read about it, talk about what we've been learning. And then it also comes with tweezers and, oh, I just realized we have lost a body part in here. Poor guy doesn't have a stomach. And then it comes with a paper, it's called an organizer for all the organs, um, where you place them as you go. So here it says stomach, intestines, etc. So you, as you take stuff out of his body, you put it on here. And then it does have a handy dandy sheet on how to put him back together. Um, but that is definitely the hardest part. So our guy's not looking so great, especially since he's missing his stomach here. Just shove that back in. And his intestines never want to stay in. He's got a few. He's got a few issues, but I was surprised at how much they loved this. Then a couple other things we did. One was we watched Operation Ouch. That is a free YouTube channel that we have been using for a couple years, actually. It's pretty much a week doesn't go by where they haven't asked to watch an Operation Ouch. Um, and so we just picked a few different ones. We watched a little bit more last week while we were doing this unit and they love it. There's interesting things and funny things and the doctors that are the hosts of the show are really good and so they liked that and then I did prior to like actually starting the unit I printed them each out a couple of papers um, this is from the homeschool compass I'll leave all these resources linked below uh, so it's got like organs of the human body and then a page where you can fill in so here they're all labeled and then on this side, you can fill them all in. And then there's information. And then they've got diagrams of the skeletal system, the muscular system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, etc. Digestive system, nervous system. So I thought I would print one of these each out, one of these out for each of my kids. And I thought they would look at these. Honestly, they didn't look at them once. So I'm going to put these in a binder and maybe we'll pull them out in a few years. I didn't really expect us to like go through and like label them and be very structured in this. That's not generally how I like to do it. Um, but I thought they would like at least look these over and they didn't at all. And then the last thing that we did, I think to my knowledge, was just write down a list of questions. As we were going through things, as we were taking Bertram apart, as we were watching Operation Ouch. If something was talked about that we wanted to follow up on, then I just had a piece of paper that I wrote questions and we just jotted things down for us to look at research a little bit more later. That way we didn't interrupt but also didn't forget stuff and that worked really well. So there's a very quick look at some of the resources we used for our human body unit. It was a lot of fun. It didn't last as long as I wanted. That's okay or not even wanted, but like expected. Uh, we all had a lot of fun with it. And I can definitely see us using these resources again in the future. You know, in a few years, they'll probably want to do this again. We'll pull it all out and kind of do the same thing again. And maybe we'll get a little bit deeper this time. So other than my kids continually want to learn about England. Um, we've been, we did that unit in December and they still want to learn more. So we're continuing that. Other than that, we don't have a unit that we're studying right now. Um, but this is kind of an overview of how I plan our very relaxed units. Um, I would love to hear if you guys are doing any kind of unit studies that might inspire us to start a new one. And thanks so much for watching, guys.